Hi, it's Brad from Voodoo, and I'm going to draw a fish pond filter. Um, I've drawn one before and uploaded the Thingiverse. This is it here. Uh, and you'll notice it's very small, uh, mainly because this was a test. Um, I just want to do some beta testing just to see if this would actually work. Um, we built a new pond downstairs and forgot to buy a uh, filter. So I thought I'd just draw one up, see what it, how it works. If it works, scale it up a bit. Um, so normally what I'd do is just grab the push-pull tool and then drag this down and make it the uh, the, the thickness that I want and, and build something on the inside to have the uh, the, the filter material wrap around. But um, kind of didn't save the model. Uh, drew it, exported to STL, and forgot to save it in SketchUp. So need to redraw it again. But this is basically what we're designing. We're just going to make it 80 mil down as well. So very simple filter. It, it works really well actually. Um, it cleaned the entire pond in a day. Um, have to change the filter every day, but it works. So I'm using SketchUp Make 2017. Um, we're not going to be using any plugins on this, so you're right to just go to SketchUp website, download it, and uh, work straight from that. Um, I have no real idea on the final design yet. It may change. Um, we'll just sort of have a play as we go. So sketch it, make, delete the little dude in the middle, and let's get started. Uh, the shortcut keys, um, yeah, we've, the main tools we're gonna be using is rectangles, so shortcut keys are for that. Uh, tape tool, um, which is T on the keyboard, push pull tool, which is P, well this tool here, space bar will take you back. Um, they're the main ones that we're gonna be using in this anyway. Uh, we'll also use follow me in uh, the offset tool. Um, not sure on the shortcut keys for those ones. So we're going to start off with the basic dimensions. So grab the rectangle tool or press R on the keyboard. And just click once and drag out. And you'll notice in the bottom right hand corner down here, it'll have the dimensions. So we can just type those in. So I'm going to say 80, 80. Um, I'm working in millimeters. Um, so that's 80 millimeters. Zoom in and let's grab the push pull tool. So press on the keyboard and pull this up and just type in 80 so and hit enter so it pushes it up to 80 so now we've got a nice cube um, so we're going to use the offset tool here we're going to have four millimeter walls so grab the offset tool and start dragging it if you go the wrong way you'll notice your shape won't appear or you get a weird line or just a really weird ugly shape so drag the other way. So to start off with, just go left or right and you'll see which way is right, the, the, the correct way for you. Um, we're gonna have four millimeter walls, so we're gonna click four, enter, and it gives us a four millimeter radius all the way around. And we're gonna stick to the four millimeter dimensions. So grab the push-pull tool, select the middle portion, and push up 76. Uh, it's a 80 millimeter cube. So pushing it up 76 means we're gonna have a four millimeter wall in here as well. When I print this, I'm gonna leave it with uh, about 20% fill. So a four millimeter wall with 20% fill is definitely strong enough for what we need as a, as a fish uh, filter, a fish pond filter. Um, so now we've got that, let's play around with the connector piece. So on the fish pump itself, this is gonna plug directly into the fish pump and it's got a 25 mil um, connector, so a 25 mil pipe will connect to it. So that means it's 12.5 mil radius that we need. Um, so grab the tape, and I draw a line with the tape tool from edge to edge, and that gives me the exact center. So from here, I can draw a circle. And when I click on the circle tool, notice down the bottom it says sides 50. By default, that'll be set to 24 for you. So if I grab this and set that 24, drag it out and say 12.5, notice it's not a clean circle, it's just a lot of straight edges, a lot of sides. Not gonna be very good um, for us. We need to have more sides on there to make it a nice clean circle. So we'll change that to 50. Um, in this instance, 50 is enough. Uh, normally I'd have it set to 200, um, de depending on the size of the radius that I'm actually drawing. So 50 for this one's enough, drag it out. We'll notice, 
you'll note that it's still got a lot of sides. It didn't actually save, so 50, enter. Still not saving, it's been a pain. See, I shouldn't have changed it. There we go, 50. Drag it out, so I'm gonna say 12.5. Now it's just being a pain. 50, enter. And we want 12.5. There we go. All right, so 12.5, that's giving us 20, so a 25 mil pipe can actually connect to it. Um, if we grab the tape tool, you'll see we go from edge to edge. Edge to edge, it's 25. So that's the internal dimensions. So we want to probably give this a two millimeter wall, which is fine. Um, so a two millimeter wall around it, we've got 12.5 uh, mil radius. So let's just say 14 um, will be enough. So grab the radius tool again. It's still got side set to 50. So click and drag that out. So 12.5, so we'll say 14. Enter. And I'm going to give it an angle as well. So let's just drag this out and we'll say 20. Now technically because this radius, the last one's 20 mil, I could actually make that a lot larger, um, or more sides, um, but I'll just leave it to, to 50 sides uh, for this tutorial, it's fine. Okay, so we've got all the circles we need. The reason I've drawn all these is because I need some guides so I know how far I'm going out. I can delete some of these later, it's, it's no big issue. Um, because we're drawing this in the middle, let's just grab the line tool and we'll grab the tape tool, we'll draw out from the side here. All right, so we've got our markers that we need. Let's grab the line tool and grab the first line. And we want to make sure it's going on the blue axis because we want to go directly up. And this is the internal part. So I'm going to make this 25 mil. So I'll just type in 25. As soon as I see that blue line, I can type in 25. It's going to follow the blue axis. Okay, so if you're not catching on what I'm doing here, the reason I've got all this marked out is because the follow me tool is going to make this triangle that I'm drawing follow around the external axis or the, the middle part here. Um, that's why we're spending the time drawing this. Uh, so we want this one here as well to come up. Right, click on there. As soon as we get the, the blue axes appear, just following the green one. Okay, we've got blue axes. We'll move this up to 25 mil as well. and connect these two together. And connect this together as well down here. Okay, and we draw this line out over here. And we want to connect this bottom point to this top point here. Delete this internal part, so now we've got a triangle with a flat top. So technically not a triangle. Um, and we want to draw, make this connect all the way around this external or this internal bit. So we can get rid of this middle circle here. And we want this to follow this path here. So if I select this path, grab the follow me tool, click once on here, and it's going to be weird. So control Z to undo, click once again, and we can make it follow itself all the way around. Um, this is a really tricky tool to get the hang of. Um, it's really annoying to be honest. When I use it, I normally select the object that I want it to follow, the path I want it to follow. Then I select the follow me tool. Normally the first time I click on it, it just does that ugly connection. Um, click on it again once after you've gotten rid of that. You make it follow itself around. Um, if it's being really ugly like that, um, let me grab that again. There we go. Just 
pan around so we can see. There we go, face to face, it's there. Now, it looks pretty, it looks like it's done its job. Good chance it hasn't. We know where the seam line is, it's here. So we zoom in, zoom right in to where it joins up and just pan around and make sure it's actually got a tight fit there. Um, a lot of the times when it actually does this itself, it doesn't. Let's get rid of that seam line and see what happens. All right, we're looking good. Okay, so we've got no gaps there, fantastic. All right, we can get rid of this internal bit. Now, we don't wanna just delete that. We wanna push that down four mil, so it cuts it out. So we grab the push-pull tool, start dropping it down. You'll notice when you get all these dots, it's actually gone to the face, which means it should cut it out and delete it. Um, I don't always trust that, because in SketchUp it can be a little bit pedantic, a bit annoying sometimes. Um, so I just push down four mil. So there we go, we've got a four millimeter wall and we've got the 25 mil connector piece there. So now we can connect this to the pump. All that's gonna happen when we connect it to the pump is it's gonna suck in water from down here and go straight through the filter. Uh, sorry, straight, straight through the water pump. So we need to have something in here to make the water come through the sides as well. And we don't want any big gunk getting through to the, um, the motor in the pump as well. So what I'll do is grab the tape and get the total dimensions internally, which is 72. And we want to drag this uh, midpoint. We're sitting in the midpoint, we're sort of right there. Yeah, 36. I'll just type in 36, it'll be faster. Um, and midpoint as well, 36. So now we've got our midpoints. And we'll say, this one all the way across, 72. So we're gonna say two mil by 72. And do the same again. Rectangle two, two, two by two. Get rid of that internal line. Let's change that. Not happy with that. Rectangle. Come from the edge. Just go straight from the edge. It's going to be slightly annoying. All right, so now we've got a four millimeter line in there. Let's get rid of the filling and yeah, we can pull this one down uh, four mil why not so that's going to stop any big bits coming through to the motor um, so we'll do the same again up here And the push pull tool. And cut these middle bits out. It's just putting a, a face on there, so it's not actually putting a real solid piece in there. So we just need to delete that out. We don't need to use a push pull tool. So now we've got a nice little cross here. It's going to stop any big leaves or anything big getting through here. So in case we take all the filter stuff out and we leave the pump running for some reason, we're still not gonna get big things come through here. Maybe some small fish will get chewed up. 
Um, oops. So, that's the start of the pump. This will now connect. If we wanted to, we could just chuck it, fill it full of uh, filter material and it will just suck all the water through from the back edge here. Uh, we want to obviously make this a little bit cleaner and tidier. So let's grab the raise tool, the offset tool. Grab that again, say four millimeters, because it's our wall thickness. And do that on every side. And 72 mil. Uh, let's have a play around with the calculator. Okay, so let's grab the rectangle tool. We're going to do eight millimeters by seventy-two. And we're going to keep doing this. So these are going to be our cutouts. Okay, so push pull tool, push all on in four millimeter wall thickness we've got. So every alternate one we want in, we want pushed in. That one didn't seem to work very well, uh, that's why. We'll come back to that one after. Okay, so this middle one didn't go through all the way because we have, let's come on under here. We've got this little piece blocking it. So quick solution for that would be just grab the rectangle tool and cut out, yeah, four by four, why not? Push it back, we'll select it, push it back four millimeters. So then we can grab this piece and push that in four mil and it will cut it out. And it looks pretty dodgy, just having that little piece there like that. So if you're really bothered by it, what you would actually do is zoom in, grab the line tool, angle to angle, push-pull tool. And drag that across so it sort of makes it a bit tidier. No one's ever going to see that, but we know it's right. Um, one thing you can do as well here, if we're looking at this piece here, look at the inside piece, we've got white, 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 and gray. Um, we can reverse the face, um, so reverse faces, so it's white again. It's just inverted the face there, that's all. Okay, so we're going to do the same on all the other pieces. Okay, so basically we have a cage now. Um, we could add these up the top here as well, but I don't want to. Um, I want all the water to be sucked in from the sides and from the bottom. Um, and we're just basically going to roll up some filter padding and uh, pop it in there. Uh, most important part is that this main back wall or top wall is, is covered, so all the water getting sucked through is going through the filter. Um, so we're going to be stacking it. So you'd actually be cutting, to fill this filter up, we'd actually be cutting squares and pushing them in. 
um, to hold them in place, we could put a bit of a lip in here. Um, so we do have a four millimeter edge. So what I'll do is grab the rectangle tool. And the reason I'm doing that is because these pieces are all open. So if I just try to push pull this section, this entire wall is gonna come over with it. Um, so actually before I do that, I'll save this. So let me just save, there we go. Okay, so we didn't save it last time. All right, we've got the rectangle tool. We'll notice it's actually filled out this wall for us again, which is kind of annoying. So let's delete these panels again. Now we've got a rectangle, pull this out, say another four mil. So we've got a bit of a lip there that's gonna hold this, this padding in. It saves us having to uh, put any bolts in or anything like that. out four mil. You notice every time we close off a section, SketchUp just wants to put a, a panel in there to close it off. It's just a matter of clicking and deleting them. Okay, so there's a basic cage. We don't actually need to have anything fully closing this off to lock it in. We could have a lid that we, we make that slots in there. Um, I really like printing things that come out in one piece as opposed to having to print multiple pieces. Um, this could be one of those objects where you probably need to have multiple pieces um, if you wanna close this top section off, but I don't need to. I'll just cut the filter paper to the internal dimensions of this, which is 70, <coughs> sorry, 72. So I'll just cut the filter paper to the internal dimensions. So if I grab that, 72 millimeters. So if I cut holy per filter um, material into 72 squares, uh, 72 squared, sorry, um, and just push them in, stack them up. I don't actually need anything in the end here to close off this section because we've got that four millimeter lip that's gonna hold it in. And that's making it a really efficient filter, I believe, because it's going to be sucking it from the sides and from the bottom. Um, and I think it'll probably last uh, three days before we have to change the, uh, the filter material, but we'll see. So there's our filter. Very simple. This section here plugs directly onto the fish pump. And that's it. Um, no plugins were needed for this uh, at all. Very simple, very easy to do. Um, so I'm going to save this now, export STL, and I'll pop it into the printer and print it off. Okay, so that's it for now. Um, I'll uh, start printing this one and I'll upload it to Thingiverse right now. I'll export it as STL so you guys can print it out as well. Thanks for watching.